One of the coolest parts about this YouTube channel is all the interaction I get to do with you guys on social media. I can't tell you how often I am perusing Instagram and a bass and bud sends me a picture of a random old school lore they are looking to get identified. Now, I am no lore collecting expert by any means, but I happen to get my hands on enough old school gold that I can identify, I would say, about 90% of the lures that I see. Recently, I was talking to a bass and bud, Dave Smith, who had a pretty cool idea for a new segment on the channel. And since we're in a little bit of a transition period here on our move to Florida, hey, I figured it's a good time to try new things. So today on Retro Bassin, we are going to play Stump the Chump. I'm going to show you some of the various lore photos that Bass and Buds have sent me on both Instagram and Facebook, and I'll see if I can identify them. Retro Bassin, kicking some ass in wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lure. Coming off of Zepco 33 Out on the bass boat making beer cans float Doing some trespassing Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules Welcome to Retro Bassin Welcome to Retro Bassin and welcome to uh, hopefully the first of several installments of the Stump the Chump series. I have got a collection of some various lure photos sent to me from bass and buds around the country and around the world. And we're going to go through it now to see if I can identify some of those old school lures. By the way, if this is your first time here at Retro Bassin and you like the fish at old school, talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment from fishing days gone past. Well, stick around, consider subscribing, and be sure to hit that bell icon. Otherwise, you won't know we post a new video like this one. And by the way, if you guys like this segment, definitely go ahead and send me those photos. Instagram is probably the best way to get a hold of me. I'm on Facebook, but honestly, I kind of suck at checking Facebook messages, and I'm a lot more respondent on Instagram. So if you've got some unidentified old school gold, send it my way. All right, the first lure comes to us from Bass and Bud Charles, and he sent a couple photos of a very interesting Fred Arbogast hula popper. The popper looks like it's in a little bit of a rough shape, but it is definitely a one of the more rare hula poppers out there. So the bait is obviously missing that living rubber skirt, but it does have a pretty cool translucent color, but that is not the most unique part of this bait. If you see that little hole or that little section in the middle of the bait sort of that goes through the back to the belly, that is actually a scent chamber. It was a really unique idea. I don't know how long it stuck around for. I don't think it was probably super effective, but that was a little sort of, I guess, pad of some sort of foam where you could add scent to your hula popper. That's a pretty cool bait nonetheless, and if it was me, I would definitely be throwing on a OG uh, tube skirt and get that sucker back on the water. Next a series of baits comes to us on Instagram from Bass and Bud Big E and he sent a couple of different photos. The first one is a pretty cool collection of Wright McGill Miracle Minnows. Looks like you've got two of the classic diving versions. It's a neat little crankbait that I've actually got a few of them. I've never fished it. I do like that metal lip, and I've got a feeling that thing could be a creek killer. But the interesting bait to me of the three is the top one. Uh, it's actually the topwater version, it looks like, of that bait. Now, the only topwater versions I've seen have like a propeller on the tail, so this one is missing it, uh, or else it is just a walking style topwater miracle minnow. Pretty cool. All right, I'm going to have to bust up my phone for the next photo from Big E, but it is a collection of... Uh, looks like a handful of nice old school baits. Uh, coming from the top, what do I see here? Looks like a bomber water dog, pretty cool bait. Uh, on the left, we've got a Lure Jensen hot shot, missing the back hook for sure. Uh, heading over to the right, looks like a knockoff jitterbug to me. 
Uh, below that, in the white with the black pattern, uh, another old school bomber crankbait missing the hooks. Noticing a little theme here with these old school baits he's got. Down to the next one, that green crankbait. That looks like some sort of big O knockoff. That's an interesting bait. Uh, the red and white looks like a Bass Areno style bait. Below that, a jointed Rapala minnow. Ooh, the two below that, those are pretty cool. These look like a pair of sparkle tail crankbaits missing the tail. Interestingly enough, you can still get those crankbaits today. And that one looks like another creek killer for sure. Uh, and the last bait of the bunch from Big E looks like a pretty well used and abused Smithwick Devil Source. All right, next we've got a spinner bait, it looks like, from Bass and Bud Charles. And yes, he could not identify this one, but this one I know. There was a pretty cool bait that came out of, I think it was Paducah, Kentucky back in the day, called Nasty Lures. It was actually a two-part or three-part system consisting of a jig head, a skirt, almost like sort of the uh, skirt of a hula grub, and a separate third portion of a soft plastic worm. This looks like the spinnerbait version of the Nasty Bait, and I actually have a couple of these new in the package that I've been meaning to throw. Uh, so Charles, thanks for the photo, and thanks for the inspiration to perhaps get that bait out on the water. Okay, Bass and Bud Josh coming in with a pretty cool new on card pack of Bass Buster Slinky Worms. Of course, Bass Buster is the company founded by Virgil Ward, who is perhaps best known for the beetle spin. But this was around that flip tail jelly worm era where just about everybody had a segmented body, flat tail worm in that sort of eight inch range. I'm not familiar with the slinky worm, but if I had more than, let's say, one pack, I would definitely rip that sucker open and give her a toss. All right, got a pretty cool message from Bass and Bud Seth after a recent episode, and he had this lure sitting in his grandfather's tackle box for many years, and he was unable to identify it until I think we probably talked about the Cordell Blue Striper in a recent video on another Cotton Cordell topwater bait. This bait that Seth has is actually a pretty sought after bait from Striper Fisherman. It is the bigger size of the two. I've got a feeling that might be a two ounce bait. It casts a country mile. It's a topwater bait, but it sinks. So definitely a cool bait. Uh, being that it came from Grandpa's tackle box though, I probably would not risk that one on the water. Got a message on Instagram from Matt who was perusing a local antique store and he found this crankbait sitting on the shelf. He wasn't sure if he should pick it up and he reached out with a photograph. So the best of my uh, ability, that looks like a Tom Man Man's Crawdad crankbait. Uh, that is a pretty cool one and I think I love just about every bait man's ever created. Tom Mann definitely had a flair for the unique sort of natural shaped lures. If you think of Tom Mann baits like the Leroy Brown, the Hackleback, and this Crawdad, yeah, Tom was not afraid to put some ridges and fins into his crankbaits. So this is definitely a very cool one and I totally would scoop that up for the right price. All right, Justin found this soft plastic bait in his grandfather's tackle box as well. And this looks like a old school Burke Bass Sassin. It is in that Doug Hannon era of the Burke topwater baits. This is a pretty cool one that I have a couple of. Think of a soft jitterbug with a pair of weedless hooks. That's basically what this bait is. I have thrown it before. I've never actually caught a fish on it. But I think when we do get to those weedy, shallow Florida lakes, I could definitely get a bite on a bait like this. Next is a collection of soft plastic baits that Bass and Bud Jacob stumbled across. And I'm gonna have to reference a photo on my phone because there are a ton of cool baits here. So starting up at the top, uh, sort of that lizard looking thing, that looks like a standard Mr. Twister lizard. Uh, nothing too crazy there. 
Uh, just below it, I see a Rebel Redneck. That's a pretty cool color selector, soft plastic bait, and one of my favorites of my youth. Just to the left of that, it looks like some sort of topwater snake. Now, that might be a Dr. Lauren Hill Bass Tricks, but it also might be a sneaky snake, so I'm, I'm not so sure on that one. Uh, to the left of the snake looks like some sort of version of a sensation worm. That's a pretty cool worm that's got three little curly tails. It's got the standard curly tail on the back and then two as sort of either arm appendages. Another cool springtime bait. Um, just to the right of that, that thing with the fin. Oh, that one actually has me stumped. Uh, that is some sort of, it looks like a baby bowfin from Jaw Tech, but that's not what it is. So uh, yeah, that lure actually does have the old chump stumped. Now to the right of that, that little sort of uh, curly looking thing, that is a man's leech. And that is a really cool spinnerbait or jig or even spoon trailer. Now to the right of the leech, there's another uh, bait. It looks like some sort of polywog. It's got a pair of flat sort of spade tail worm appendages. No idea what that is. That's another unique bait. Man, some cool ones in here. The blue tailed worm to the right, that looks like a man's manipulator. And that red worm just to the right of the manipulator. Yeah, that looks like some sort of flip tail knockoff. I can tell that's not a flip tail worm. It could even be a cream worm to be honest with you. Below that, I do see a flip tail lizard in a nice translucent purple. Uh, just below that, that is a man's snake. It looks like that black snake. That is definitely a Dr. Lauren Hill Bass Tricks. That might be the Bill Norman version. And then below that looks like some sort of curly tail worm. And last but not least, a looks like an eight inch man's jelly worm in grape. Well, nice collection of soft plastics, Jacob. Thank you for sending that along. And yes, I can think of several on that table that I would be throwing. All right, last lure comes to us from Kevin. And this is a topwater bait that has him stumped. And I've got to be honest, it's got me stumped as well. I don't know if this is a off-brand version of topwater, but I've never seen this before. Looks like it's got a, a hard, probably wooden body a blade up front, and then at the back, that little lump on the bottom, that looks like maybe a set of eyes. Kevin, that is definitely a unique topwater, but if there's any bass and buds out there who know what it is, drop a comment below. If you're interested in following me on Instagram and sending in photos of your unidentified old school gold, uh, definitely hit me up on Instagram at RetroBassin. I'm also on Facebook and I do the best I can there, but I Really can't make any promises over on the Facebook. But send me those Instagram photos, and if you guys like what you see, we'll do more of this Stump the Chump series on Retro Bassin. By the way, if you're looking for more old school content, click right here. Otherwise, I will see you right back here, same time, same place. Until then, keep the carpet side up, and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin.